John Boehner, former Speaker of the House, loves a good cigar, loves a good drink. Uh, he is now one of the, the, the leading advocates for legalizing marijuana. Let's play that clip. You um, decided to throw some your weight behind uh, the legalizing of cannabis industry. Do you think that the federal government needs to pass a law that would basically take that off of the drug list so that it could be more in line with what's happening in the states? Yeah, we've got now some 37, 38 states who've uh, legalized cannabis in some form. Uh, the federal government says it's illegal. Uh, it's time for the federal government uh, to look at these 37, 38 states, a vast majority of them, who've legalized this uh, and take some action to basically get out of the way. I'm still a just say no kid. Um, so I've watched this uh, debate and uh, your embrace of it with a little bit of skepticism. How am I wrong? Well, I, I won't say I embrace it, uh, but you know, when you're in politics, as long as I do, you learn to listen to your constituents. And over the years, uh, I was in Congress and I saw state after state after state uh, begin to legalize cannabis. Uh, I began to, to take notice because obviously the people were speaking. And by the time I left office, I thought to myself, you know, listen, uh, I'd rather have a glass of wine and smoke a cigarette, uh, but if somebody wants to smoke a joint, what do I really care? But once I got to look into some of the research about the, the benefits of cannabis for kids with seizures, uh, for soldiers that have chronic pain or PTSD, mm -hmm. uh, I began to believe there's, there's a place uh, for this product uh, in American society. And I don't uh, go out and promote it, uh, but I do uh, stand, I serve on the board of a cannabis company. Uh, I believe in what the industry is doing. And uh, the American people want to smug a joint let him do. Hey, well, you know, you mentioned why. All right. Uh, I think we, we just lost Jordan and we're going to wait for him to come back. But uh, are, we, are, we, are we good? Okay. Uh, I'll start with you, Alex. I mean, this is, this is, uh, hi, it's almost like he was in office for like most of his life. Um, could he have done something like before he was on the board of, I mean, this is just like so transactional. He says it on TV. He's like, yeah, I'm making some money doing this. And, you know, F you black and brown communities who we've uh, locked up for the last, you know, s several decades uh, for, for, for barely any weed. But here we go. Now I'm uh, ready to make some money off. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was going to say, I was going to say, isn't he working for the weed industry? So you have to take what he says with, with a major grain of salt. Um, but you look at least, I mean, yeah, it, he's not actually in Congress. He can't actually vote on anything or, or write a bill at this point. Um, but at least, at least now he is, you know, despite his major financial conflict of interest, he is on the, on the right side of the, uh, the issue, at least for now. Um, but I will say, I mean, I, it's, it's hard to find someone more opposed to marijuana than Joe Biden. Um, I mean, they fired people for past marijuana use. Um, honestly, according to their... I know one of you know them. One of them. Before oh, wow. so it you know happened, happened, they reached out. And they said, "I just didn't get a job with the Biden administration because I admitted to smoking weed." And I was like, "What? Hang on." And then, of course, the story came out, and so many other people had the same. Story. This is insane. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I just it's no. It's and I'm curious. I mean, did did um did, was this uh, kind of a um was this unexpected for these people? And, and and was it was it like many years earlier? Was it any time of your life that you'd used it? I mean, that's I don't of... I don't know all the details, but I do know that the person was young. And they were asked, have you ever smoked marijuana? And given the world that we're in right now, I think it was like, sure, I've smoked marijuana. It's not like that would have been magnified or unveiled in any way. It's not like, okay, if Joe Biden hires someone who smoked weed before in his life or admits to smoking weed, suddenly it means that he is as the federal government, uh, you know, proposing legalizing marijuana. It's not like Joe Biden is suddenly like, I am for legalizing marijuana, which essentially means the federal government is for, you know, I, I don't know. I, I don't understand what the justification was on it, but go ahead. Yeah, it just seems uh, kind of ridiculous. I mean, the time that we're living in, it's a much um, less harmful substance than alcohol um, and a bunch of prescription drugs, obviously. Uh, it seems absurd. Um, but it, it is nice that the states are are legalizing and even our state of New York yeah. um, finally did it. And and there's only there's one reason why Cuomo relented after blocking it for many years. What Probably was that, because Alex? the yeah, right. I, I, I can't. <laughs> has he been in the news lately? I'm trying to remember. Um, I mean, there's actually two different scandals, of course, the, the nursing home scandal. And then uh, because of all the brave women who came out and, and spoke about how Cuomo sexually harassed and abused them. Um, so he had his back up against the wall. He, he had to do something popular. 
So I guess he, he encouraged us and kind of claimed almost some ownership of it, which is, was absurd. But I mean, that's kind of how he operates. Yeah, he's um, been doing that since for the IDC. He's been doing that forever. You know, when uh, Cynthia Nixon proposed something, he would just mimic it. And I mean, that's just Cuomo's modus operandi. Um, so, okay, we're waiting for Jordan, just so everybody knows, Jordan had a little bit of a Wi-Fi issue, some construction's happening in his building, we were just told, so he's trying to get back on. So, uh, in the meantime, I, 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 I was gone for I, on vacation for a little over a week, and I didn't have the, the pleasure of reporting on Matt Gates. so will you just spare me a little bit so we can have... <laughs> have a little bit of a conversation about uh, Matt Gates. So House Minority Leader uh, Scalise, Steve Scalise, has weighed in on the allegations of against Matt Gates. Hey, Jordan, Jordan's back. Uh, so you're on mute. Verizon so, heard me talking about Alec and they got mad and coming out. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and with that. <laughs> um, all right, so we're talking about Matt Gates because I didn't have the opportunity to really discuss Matt Gates because I was on break and just give it, give it to me, please. Yeah, uh, Steve's <laughs> House Minority Leader Steve Scalise has, has now weighed in on the Matt Gates, Gates Gate. Is that what we're calling it? Is that the updated? Gate, yeah, let's show that. Sounds, sounds about right. <laughs> well, you know, we've heard a lot of stories. I mean, obviously, I've the, read the media reports, but uh, there's been nothing that we've seen yet from the Department of Justice. Uh, if something's going on, obviously, we'll find out about it. Uh, you know, right now, it, it's, it's hard to speculate on, on rumors. Uh, but, you know, if, if something really formal happened from justice, we would, of course, react and take action. All right. I mean, I love how Republicans operate. They're like, oh yeah, we, I mean, like it literally it, it, it's, it, nothing matters. Nothing, it, it's, it's, I think on the scale, like this is how I've kind of pictured it. Progressives will cancel you for like winking at the wrong person in 1975. And then the Democrats like centrists are just like, ah, rape me. doesn't matter. And then um, Republicans just don't care. <laughs> they just don't care. Like literally they could have like multiple lawsuits and investigations and they just don't care. How, I mean, if, if, if this is how accountability works, <laughs> where do we see our future going? I mean, what? Sorry, no, go it's, I, I will say one thing. I like Marco Rubio's response. He said he hadn't heard much of it. I'm sure he had no idea who Jill Greenberg was down in Florida. I'm sure he had no connections with any of those people. I'm sure that uh, Marco Rubio just says he hadn't heard about any of it. This is all news to him. I'm sure just nothing, nothing familiar. I mean, the thing is, Matt Gates is in a very red district. You know, he could be any other Republican would win that district. And again, I'll just keep hitting it over and over again. There is no accountability if they cannot uh, be challenged in their districts if they gerrymander. You know, Florida's not super gerrymandered, but all these Republicans, they only come out against people if they feel the pressure and they feel the shame and there's a chance it could hurt them. When there's literally no chance that any of these people are likely to be hurt, they are not going to take a stand. And uh, that's because they're soulless and they're hacks and they have no shame. But now that shame doesn't work, they've eliminated shame through money, through the entire ecosystem of like untruths, of their entire own information ecosystem that just ignores it. Fox News hasn't touched the Matt Gates thing. Why would they be worried? They're not, not going to worry about a primary. I mean, Nothing. you know, very basically to say, hey, this guy, maybe we don't like him as much as now. But uh, until they, you know, until they are challenged until they live in an ecosystem or an information system where there is you know a chance that they could lose because they own not are only they're not only going after the most far right partisan voters why would they come out i guess if they have no souls you know that's the calculation they make why would they do anything well what i don't understand is and, and we saw this play out with trump during the primary in 2016 the evangelicals, I mean, when he started to do well with evangelicals better than like Ted Cruz, who is one, um, I don't understand how like that that just goes to the side. Like it's 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 not an issue anymore. Like we, we don't care about morals. We only care about Democrats' morals. We only care about like that woman over there. I mean, I have family members who became evangelical and it's every time I go visit them in Virginia, it's like, it's like a logic. I'm like, well, I don't understand this. This means this. Okay, so, so that you care about, but you don't care about that, but you only care about that when it's a Democrat. I'm so confused. It's, it's a web. But I mean, Alex, why don't the, do the evangelicals really care about these issues? Like you think that the, all the people cared about Pizzagate would care about Gatesgate. Right. I mean, everything's partisan now. I, I can't speak for evangelicals, but they are, white evangelicals are, are one of the most, if not the most right-wing group of voters in the entire country, which says a lot because we are we have a very right-wing Republican Party right now. So they're they're on the extreme right, uh, which is which is troubling in itself. 
Um, but yeah, look who was president for the last four years. I mean, if, if, if nothing, if, if he was Teflon then like, no one's going to care about a couple, uh, you know, some, some stuff that Matt Gates did. Um, uh, I mean, I guess even if it involves child trafficking, sex trafficking, uh, which is extremely serious and I think could result in jail time. Um, but yeah, I'm surprised Scalise didn't just go and say the, the magic two words that the, the right loves, which is cancel culture. Um, everything now, we're in this kind of post-truth Trumpian world uh, where everyone kind of invents in QAnon world, where everyone invents their own truths. And if they don't like something, they just say it's fake news or propaganda. Um, and if they do, if they like something and it happens to be not true, that doesn't really seem to bother them. But everything, yeah, everything is cancel culture, whether there's merit or not. And it, there's no kind of, there, there's no middle ground, you know? And so um, we're, I think we're just in the, one of the dumbest eras, political eras that we, uh, in a long time, just inc incredible stupidity of a lot of different people. Um, and, and, and we have, we have these powerful people who are exploiting that. Um, and they're just as stupid as anyone else. So, I mean, I'm just to say this is like a mind boggling time and it's not surprising that Matt Gates is, is honestly, he's probably going to be okay. Um, unless think even if it's illegal, I mean, um, if the DO, if, if he gets convicted of something, yeah. yeah, I think there's probably no option uh, other than to resign or, or to have the caucus, you know, get, kick him out. But I just, I mean, after Trump, it's like, uh, anything kind of goes on the right, and we have we have a, you know Jewish space la laser woman Marjorie Taylor Greene in Congress. I mean, like, I mean, it, it, Paul Gosar, who who's spoke at a white nationalist conference very recently. I mean, like, there are no standards. There are no standards. And you know they've created they've created this narrative that they are always under attack. They of course control most governments throughout the country, and they up until this past year. I mean, up until now, controlled the entire federal government, basically. They still have all their judges in there. They have all big business, but they are always under attack. And so when you create that narrative, they can say, hey, look, these people are framing me. These people are trying to cancel me. These people are trying to set us up. They are trying to attack your freedoms and your values. And so it's, of course, an alternate reality. It's not certainly not white, rich people who are under attack in this country. I'll say that much. But that's the framing they create. And so everything is then they can be on the defensive about everything. And they can say, no, that's not true. We're just being set up. And so it's this victim culture as well. You know, it's, it's, it's this far right wing belief that they are, you know, it's, it's white fragility. And it's this belief that they are the victims, that they are under attack. And then just like I think anything else, Matt Gates is being framed. Matt Gates is having horrible things said about him. The FBI is trying to make his dad wear a wire. You know, it's all these bizarre Same things. Story, yeah. yeah. So Which is also, by the way, but the two point, I mean, if this story is what, what it seems to be turning out to be, there's a point where Matt Gaetz's lawyer is going to have to say, yo, shut up. Like, this isn't looking good. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, some of that, some of the aspects of the story might be true, but you're like, mm, it's not looking good. And that's what I think is very odd is, is for Steve Scalise or anybody in leadership or anybody in the Republican Party, frankly, to be sticking their neck out for somebody who clearly has an investigation that could go in many different directions. At least just, just bite your tongue. Thanks for watching and listening to The Nomi Key Show. But remember to click like and subscribe on YouTube and please share on social media. If you're not already a patron, please join us for as low as $5 a month on patreon.com slash The Nomi Key Show for early and special content. That investment makes a huge difference. We are not corporate media raking in the dough. It's really you guys that are keeping us going. So please consider being a patron. And to our current patrons, thank you so much. We are incredibly grateful to you. We also now have swag. So check us out on the to get your mugs, your totes, and your stickers.